Hi everyone, I'm John from Radford Mathematics, and in this video on circle theorems, we're going to be learning about the angle at the circumference of a semicircle, or semicircle. Put simply, given a semicircle, any angle at its circumference will be a right angle. And that's the rule. Now, let me go ahead and get that rule written down, and then I'll work through three examples in which we'll actually use it. On the right-hand side of the screen here, you can see that I've added three circles, and these all correspond to examples that I'm going to work through in just a minute. First of all, though, let me use the circle on the left-hand side to illustrate what this rule or what this theorem is actually saying. And all I need to do for that is to draw a diameter for this circle. And so, for instance, I could draw a diameter right here, passing through the center. There we go. This diameter splits this circle into two semi- or semi-circles. Indeed, we have half a circle up here, and we have half a circle down here. And what the theorem or rule we learn about in this video tells us is that the angle at any point along the circumference of a semicircle is a right angle. And here's what that means. Let's say I consider the semicircle at the top here, and I'll place a point anywhere along its circumference. For instance, right here then the angle formed by joining this point to the end points of the diameter will be a right angle. So if I draw this chord right here, as well as this chord right there, this angle must be a right angle. And that will be true regardless of where I place this point along the circumference of the semicircle. And that's the rule. Now it's worth sketching a few semicircles on your own just to convince yourself of this. Regardless of where I place this point along the circumference, the angle it will form at the circumference will always be a right angle. And because of how much we study right angle triangles, this rule is often used in exam questions. So let's now work through the three examples that we see here to get some idea of what might be asked in an exam. I'll start with this circle here. And in fact, I'll call it example one. There we go, example one. Now, we need to find this unknown angle labeled A here on this diagram. And looking at the information we're given here, we can see that this line segment is a diameter. Since this is a diameter, the sector I'm hovering over right now is in fact a semicircle. And since this point is on that semicircle's circumference, we can use the rule we've just seen to state that this must be a right angle. Now, to find A, all we have to do is use the fact that all three of the interior angles of a triangle must add up to 180. In other words, 28 plus 90 plus A must equal to 180. And I'll go ahead and write that here. We know that A plus 90 plus 28 must equal to 180. Now, 90 plus 28 is 118, so A plus 118 must be equal to 180. Finally, to find A, all we have to do is subtract 118 from both sides of this equation. In other words, I'll subtract 118 from the left-hand side, and I'll subtract 118 from the right-hand side. And doing so leaves us with A on the left-hand side, and I'll write that here, A on the left-hand side equals to 180 minus 118, which is 62, and that's 62 degrees. And we're done. Okay, let's look at the next circle, and I'll label it example two. Now in this circle, once again, we need to find the value of A. And this time, we're not actually given any of the interior angles. Instead, we're simply told that this interior angle is A, and this interior angle is 2A. And to find it, we use the fact that this line segment here is a diameter to this circle, which means that the sector I'm hovering over right now is in fact a semicircle. Consequently, since this point is at the circumference of that semicircle, we can state that this interior angle must be a right angle. And now that we've established that, to find the value of A, we use the fact that this 90 degree angle plus A plus 2A has to equal to 180. And if I go ahead and write that, and I'll do that down here on the left hand side, we have A plus 2A plus 90 equals to 180. So that's A plus 2A plus 90, which equals to 180. Now gathering these A's, we have A plus 2A, which is 3A, 
So that's 3a plus 90 equals to 180. And now I get rid of this 90 that's being added to the left-hand side, and I do so by subtracting 90 from both sides, which leaves us with 3a on the left-hand side. So that's 3a. And the right-hand side becomes 180 minus 90, which is 90. Finally, I get rid of this 3 that's multiplying the a, and I do so by dividing both sides of the equation by 3. So if I write that, I'll divide the left-hand side by 3 and the right-hand side by 3 as well. And finally, a, and that's equal to 90 divided by 3, which is 30, and that's 30 degrees. And that's the answer. I now work through the third and final example, for which I need to add a bit of information. And so I'll just say, let AC equal to 13 centimeters, and let BC equal to 12 centimeters, and we need to find the side length AB. And in fact, I could add these side lengths to the illustration we have here. So we have AC, which equals to 13 centimeters, and AC is this length right here. So I'll just label that 13 centimeters. We have BC, which equals to 12 centimeters, and BC is this length right here. So I'll label that as well, that's 12 centimeters. And we need to find the side length AB. Well, looking at all this, we can see that AC passes through the circle's center and has endpoints on the circle's circumference. It's therefore a diameter. And since AC is a diameter, the sector I'm hovering over right now is therefore a semicircle. Consequently, since B is at the circumference of that semicircle, the interior angle here at B must be a right angle. And so the triangle ABC is in fact a right angle triangle. And its hypotenuse is this diameter. Now, since it's a right angle triangle, to find this unknown side length AB, we can use Pythagoras' theorem, which remember states that the square of the hypotenuse, so AC squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. In other words, we can go ahead and write that AC squared, so that's 13 squared, so 13 squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Well, one of those sides is BC, whose length is 12 centimeters, so I can already write that, that's equals to 12 squared, plus AB squared, and so I'll write that as well. That's the side length we're trying to find, AB squared. Now, 13 squared is equal to 169, and that's equal to 12 squared, which is 144. And so that's 144 plus AB squared. Next, I get rid of this 144 on the right-hand side, and I do so by subtracting it from both sides. So I subtract 144 from 144, and I subtract it from 169 as well. Now the left-hand side becomes 169 minus 144, which is 25, and that's equal to 144 minus 144, which is 0, plus AB squared. In other words, 25 equals to AB squared. Finally, since AB squared equals to 25, we can apply the square root to both sides of this equation to state that the square root of 25 is equal to AB. In other words, AB is equal to 5. And that's 5 centimeters. And there we go. We now know about the circle theorem involving the angle at the circumference of a semicircle. And that's it for this tutorial.